Greetings. My name is Kalinda Egi. I am head instructor and technical advisor of the Temerian Martial Arts Institute. And what we're going to share with you in this tape are some of the African martial sciences, those sciences that produce the world's first martial culture. The Africans along the Nile Valley produced those martial sciences that brought about the usage of the spear, the usage of the bow and arrow, horse riding, and other martial entities that are part of our martial concepts of today. Moving along the Nile Valley, those Africans moved out into other places of the world, into Indonesia, into the Philippines, into India, into China, and other places, bringing not only martial knowledge, but also philosophical and cultural knowledge that was exchanged with the peoples in those particular areas. The African sciences are vast. They move in and out of the 13 million square miles of Africa. In the south, we have the Zulu people with Zulu Empi, which is a very powerful martial art developed by Shaka. We have in the north those martial sciences coming from the Nile Valley with Tutmos the first and second and third, also with Ramesses the second, who were great warriors. We have the great Ashanti empires in the west, the Ghana, Mali, and Songhai empires, all produced great, powerful warriors. What we're going to do in this tape is give you a basic understanding of some of the concepts that are inside of the African martial sciences. These martial arts are given to us by the ancestors, those who have come before. What we're going to do is share. What we're going to do is show you those martial concepts that come from the dance movement. What we're going to do is show you some of the dance and move into the realm of possibility, into the realm also of probability, and show you what martial movements can be derived from the dance. Let's get busy. What we're going to do now is move to the dance portion and the fighting portion of our tape. First movement we're going to show and that we teach at Tamarian Martial Arts Institute is the utilization of the circle and understanding of the universal principle. The arms will move in 360 degrees each arm. Also, there will be a slight sway of the body. Let's get started. As you can see, the hands are covering the body. You're getting an understanding of not only motion, but also how to develop power, how to develop bodily power, and also how to develop internal power. The hands are blocking in 360 degrees so that you get an understanding of the full circle. They cover the groin area, they cover the head area. Now, what I want you to understand is that even though they're moving, the movements are elongated so that you can see what's going on. Actually, in the dance form, they're a little more subtle. They're a little more tight. So what we're going to show is a few variations as far as movement and get an understanding of that. Then we're going to move straight into the realm of possibility and probability. The movements can go from back and forth, side to side, stepping with footwork, all the different movements. These movements are actually capturing the opponent. Very good. Go back and sing. Three, two, one. Thank you. Now what we're going to do is move into the realm of possibility and probability. Those movements that we can derive from the dance form and relate into martial knowledge. So we're going to take that actual movement and do it with the person. So that when he punches, these are the movements that we worked with the dance. So that you get an understanding of how they relate from moving from the dance into the fighting actuality. So we parry, we lift, we pull, and we move into the same position. Once again, we parry with the step, we lift with the step, and we pull with the step keeping the same configuration. Now, this can be utilized with an aggressive pull to be able to pull the opponent off balance. In other words, as he punches, here, this way. Once more. To pull the opponent off balance. Then we can move into being able to tighten him up a little bit with hands, with knees, with feet, with the head, because all the particular weapons and tools of the body are utilized to destroy the opponent. 
So he punches here. This way. The movement that we've been using can go to the outside, but it also can go to the inside. With the step, the hand hits, and we pull, coordinating the movement. Also, going back to the outside, we can parry and hit without the footwork being utilized. We can also put the first arm in. In other words, just parrying this way. Or we can use the second motion, which would just be a lift. Or we could just pull on any part of the body once we moved in. Say he punches, and I move in. Instead of jerking here, what I could do is move inside of the body, and I could jerk his ear or jerk some part of his anatomy. And that's utilized as far as developing the power from the dance. Also, the second hand is utilized to monitor his second arm. In other words, his rear punch. If we move out, this hand monitors the rear hand. Let's move a little faster. Here. Also, moving to the inside. The rear hand is utilized to monitor the rear hand. Here. This way. So the dance movement can be utilized inside or can be utilized outside to be able to parry, to be able to hit or claw, to be able to pull not only the arm, but also different portions of the anatomy. And also get a better understanding of how kinetically we can move. Thank you.